since last time I don't have enough time. Now I have enough time, then we should prove this interesting theorem or a common sense. So it states that every positive real number has an nth root. So before proving this, we need a supporting lemma for this theorem. It states that for a b being reals, like a b reals, a b being reals, and this inequality is true, then we have b n minus a n is less than b minus a n b n minus one. And we shall prove it. So b n minus a n is equal to b minus a times b n minus one plus b n minus two a to the one plus the da, da plus a n minus one. This is basically uh, by a theory of polynomials. And note that a is less than b, right? A is less than b. So all the terms, all the semands, they're less than the, this b n minus 1, less than b n minus 1, less than b n minus 1. So the whole thing is less than b minus a times there's n of them, n of the b n minus 1s. So we're good. Okay, now we should prove the theorem. It says that there exists a unique real number y such that y is equal to x. So let's just prove the uniqueness first. If there exists, are they unique? So if they are not equal to each other, y1 less than y2, then we have y to the nth power is less than y2 to the nth power. So they can, like, it's impossible for, if they're like, if, if y1, y1 to the nth is it x, 2n, with y1 less than y2, then we have this is true, so this cannot be true, it's impossible, it's ridiculous, so. The uniqueness is done. Uniqueness. Uniqueness is done. Now we should prove it exists. We should prove it exists. Existence. Okay. <coughs> so, for the proof of existence, we're gonna use, we're gonna use use the least upper bound property of R and the fact that Q, the rationals, dense in the reals. We should use these two facts that we have proven. And let's consider the set. Let's consider the set E. E being all the positive reals such that t to the n is less than x. So we we just for this set, we just trying to find the supremum of this set and we're gonna see what happens. So we want to show, want to show first of all. E is non-empty. Two, E is bounded above. <coughs> First, if T is X over one plus X, C 
since then we know that t is um, less than 1 and greater than or equal to 0. Then we have t to the n less than or equal to t. And it's for sure going to be less than x. And you might ask why t is less than x? Because we have taken t equal to x divided by something greater than 1. So this shows that t is an e. Second, if t is greater than 1 plus x, then we know that t is greater than 1 and t is greater than x. Right? Then we know that tn is greater than tn minus 1, blah, 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 greater than t. And also t is greater than x, right? And we're combining these two. We have t to the n is less than, is, is, is greater than t, and t is greater than x. So, T is not an E. T is not an E. Because Tn is greater than X. So, it implies that if T is greater than 1 plus X, then T is not an E. And by using the contrapositive principle, we have if t is n e, then t must less than or equal to 1 plus x. These two statements are logically equivalent. If you prove this is true, then this is true. So, we have shown that 1 plus x is an upper bound of e. From here. If it's any, then this must be less than or equal to 1 plus x. So, we have shown 1 is true, q is true, then by the least upper bound property, we have let y be the supreme of e exists. Okay, how many pages we have? All right, we have enough. So, we want to show that y to the n is equal to x. So, suppose for a contradiction that y n is less than x. Suppose y n is, is less than x. <coughs> and the idea of this proof is to so the idea big idea to create a little positive number h such that such that we have y plus h to the n is less than x. Then, this, this contradicts the fact that contradicts contradicts the fact that y is an upper bound. y is upper bound of e, right? Because something greater than y is an e. How come y is an upper bound of e? So, if we have if we have y plus h to the n is less than x, then if we subtract y to the n on both sides. The inequality still holds because it's an order field, right? Minus y to the h, or y to the n, 
less than x minus y to the n. And now we use the lemma. Use the lemma. Remember the lemma? It says that it says that okay, so first y plus h is greater than y for sure. And we have this inequality. So we're using the lemma, it becomes y plus h to the n minus y to the n is less than h times n times y plus h to the n minus y. So this is the b, this is the a. b minus a is h times n times b to the n minus 1 power. Okay, great. And now if we show that this is true, sorry, like, if this is, sorry, so like, if this is less than x minus y n, then we're good, right? So, we want h such that h times n times y plus h to the n minus 1 is less than x minus 1 to the h, y to the h. Then we have h is less than this ugly looking number. And we're dividing something positive. So y plus h is positive y. N is positive for sure. Why is y plus h positive? Because y is upper bound of e, right? Y is upper bound of e. And e are all the, like the positive reals. So if it's like upper bound of sets of pos some positive reals, then it's of course going to be positive. So y plus h is positive. So like this is true. So if you want, also we, if you assume, also, also if we have h is between 0 and 1, like if we have h is less than this and also h is between 0 and 1, then n times y plus 1 y because h is less than 1 if h is less than 1 so you, if you add 1 and you multiply like the denominator it's going to be greater so it's like it's going to be less than y plus h to the n minus 1 right so this straightforward and such h exists because we have two real numbers <coughs> and q is dense in R. so you have an h and q such that it's between these two real numbers perfect so perfect so good okay now we're like working we're just working, we're just done with the ideas. But we have to prove it now. So the idea is good. So now, pay attention. We choose an H. Such that. Choose h such that this is true. Then we have h times n times y plus h to the n minus 1 is less than this times this, this times this, which is 
x minus y to the n. And then, by the lemma, by the lemma, we have this is greater than y plus h to the n minus y to the n. And now we have this inequality being true, this chain inequality. Then we have y plus h to the n less than x. Right, you have this is less than this, as shown in ideas, right? So, <clears throat> the contradiction has appeared. Because you have something greater than y, that's it, that's n the set E. That's in the set E. So contradiction. So we have only shown that if y n is less than x, then we have something ridiculous. Now it's the part two. Now it's part two. If we assume y n is greater than x, so let's start with the idea again. We want a small k. We want a small k, positive k, such that y minus k is less than y is an upper bound of e. Such that, so y. Y minus k is upper bound of e, but y is being the suprema. And something less than suprema is upper bound of e, then we have a contradiction. <clears throat> and so it means that if y minus k is upper bound of e, that means that t, if t is an e, then t is less than y minus k. Contrapositive again. Let me just write it smaller. And no space, no space, come on. So it means that y, y minus k is upper bound, that means that if t is an e, then t is less than k. Contrapositive again. The negation of this is if t is greater than or equal to y minus k, then t is not an e. And also we know that if t n is greater than x, then t is not an e. Also, right, this is true, like we've shown this before. So we want we want something like t we want something like t is greater than or equal to y minus k and also and also t n is greater than x. So we want this to be true if we want this to be true and we want to show we want to show so if this is true and t not an e is true Then we have this is true. Then we have this is true. Right? So. <clears throat> so if we want tn is greater than x, if tn is greater than x, then we have negative tn is less than negative x. Then we will add y on both sides, y to the n on both sides. We use the lemma again. So we have yn minus tn is less than 
are equal to y n minus y minus k to the n here from here right is less than by the lemma is k times n times y to the n minus 1. So if you take a look at this inequality, pay attention to this, k times n minus 1. If we let this thing is equal to y n minus x, then we're good. Then we have y n minus t n less than y n minus x. Then like we're good. But <coughs> From here, we use the lemma here, but is y minus k greater than zero? We use the lemma here, but is this thing greater than zero? Because in the lemma it requires a and b are both greater than zero. So we want to make sure that if if k is if k is actually greater than zero, if y minus k is either actually greater than zero, so which means that if k is actually less than y is k less than y so so if you let k in if we let this to be true then then we have k n y n minus 1 equals to y n minus x then we have k is equal to y n minus x and y minus 1 and k minus 1 k minus y is greater than 0 like you can calculate it on your own minus 1 and do the random things up there right and yeah but we also want to know is 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 k greater than 0 the answer is yes, because y n is greater than x, so y n minus x is greater than zero, and all the positive things out there are greater than zero, so k is greater than zero. Okay, great. Yes. Yes. So, k minus y is greater than zero. Yes. So the lemma holds. Yes. Now. So now, we let k, y n minus x, and y n minus 1, this is a good k, this k is a good k, then we know that, then we know that this is true, and for t greater than y minus k, so we have chose positive k less than y and we let t greater than or equal to their difference then we have y n minus t n substitute like replace it y minus k to the n less than k n y n minus 1 equals to y n minus x Take a look at here, then we have y n minus t n less than y n minus x. Boom, boom, reverse. Then we have t n greater than x. So we have t n greater than x, and t is uh, greater than equal to y minus k. Right, this is true. We have these two holding true. So we have T is not an E. 
If this is true, if this is true, then this is true. So t is down to e, which means that for t and e, then this is not true. This is not true means this is true. And k is greater than zero, right? So y minus k is an upper bound. It's greater than all the t's, all the t's and e. y minus k is greater than all t's and the e. So y minus k is upper bound. So that's the y contradiction. Contradicts that y is supremum. So we have y and must be equal to x. We shown the existence being true. Yes. And we have shown the uniqueness also. Where's the uniqueness? The uniqueness is also true. And we have proved the theorem. QED. Or trust. I don't know, whatever. And now we have a corollary. So, it's a common sense. We, we, we learned this in high school, right? But we have to prove it. So we prove it. So AB to the power of 1 over N is like, yeah, of course. But have to prove it. So basically, by the theorem, by the theorem, let let alpha be equal to a to the one over n and beta equal to b to the one over n. This is true because the nth root exists. Why? We show that nth root exists. We denote. We denote denotes y is the nth root of x, right? The nth root exists. So, positive reals, so the nth root exists. The positive integer, so the nth root exists, call it alpha and beta. So we have a, b, a is, so alpha is equal to alpha to the n s to alpha to the n beta to the n this is equal to a by the theorem is equal to alpha beta to the n why because because with the multiplication is abelian group which means that which means that alpha times beta is equal to beta times alpha. It communicates, like they, it, they commute. So like you have alpha, 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 blah, 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 alpha, beta, 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 blah, blah, blah. N of them doesn't matter. N of them, right? Then we can swap the alpha and the beta and we swap the beta again, swap it, swap it. Alpha, beta, alpha, alpha, blah, 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 alpha, beta, beta, beta. And you swap this beta to here. We swap this beta to here. And eventually we have, this is true. We have, we have, this is true, right? Ooh. Oh, this is sick. So. Then we have a b, the nth root of a b by definition is equal to alpha beta. And alpha beta, they're equal to a to one of n, b to one of n, as proven. And that's the end of this lecture.
Ja. Okay. 